Hi, and welcome to this online professional Forex trading course. I'm Adam Koo, and in this course, you're going to be learning the exact skills and strategies of how to trade Forex consistently, how to achieve consistent profits and create another source of income for yourself. And I can tell you that if you are committed to master these skills and to apply and to practice, you're going to be trading like a professional in a short period of time. And you can create another source of income for yourself to you know, better your lifestyle or eventually use it to replace your day job. So if you know nothing about Forex, let's begin with lesson one, which is the introduction to Forex trading. So what is Forex? I'm sure you've heard of it you know, in the news or through friends. And basically Forex is foreign exchange or FX, right? And the FX market is one in which a nation's currency is traded of that at another, at a mutually agreed rate. The Forex market is run electronically within a network of banks, so there's no exact you know, stock exchange, right? It's you know, run via the bank network, and it's 24 hours, five days a week. It's the largest market in the world, so if you compare it with the stock market, the total value of the stock market is about $500 billion. In comparison, for Forex, it's $3 trillion a day. Okay, so it's a it's the biggest market in the world. And the way I trade Forex is I treat it like any other business, right? So in any business, how do you make money? You make money by buying something and selling it at a higher price. Okay, for example, if you own a restaurant, you're buying ingredients at a lower price, you're you know, buying people's time to cook the meals, and you're selling it at a higher price on the menu. That's how you make money. Or in business, sometimes you can sell to your customer first, at a higher price and manufacture it at a lower price and deliver the goods, right? That's, that happens in any business. Now, there's no difference in a forex trading business. The only difference is you're buying and selling not physical products, you're buying and selling currencies, okay? And it's one of the best businesses you can get into for a few reasons. Number one, minimal investment. So if you start any other business, a restaurant, a shop, you know, it's going to take a few hundred thousand dollars just to get started, okay? But in the in a business of forex trading, you can start as little as two hundred US dollars, which is a mini trading account. Okay, I can say that you know most people start with a few thousand, but again, you can even start with two hundred dollars. Next, minimal time commitment. Right? In any other business, especially if you're a startup, forget about going back to your family. Forget about work-life balance. You're working fifteen to sixteen hours a day. You're doing everything right. But when you trade forex, even as a beginner. You don't need more than three to six hours a day to be really, really successful and to succeed in this business. Next, you don't have to worry about overheads like any other business. There's no employees. There's no uh, um, office rental to worry about. There's no inventory costs. Okay. Next thing is recession proof. You know, the main thing that kills people or kills businesses are bad times, recession. People are not spending money, right? In the business of forex trading, um, there is no good and bad time, right? You know why? Because we make money regardless of the direction of currency pairs, right? The market goes up, currency goes up, we go long on a certain currency pair. If the currency pair goes down, we go short, which is piece to sell. So either way, we're making money regardless of the economic situation. So it is totally non-correlated to the stock market. So if you're someone who's already trading stocks like I am and investing in stocks, and you want to have another avenue to generate income that's not correlated, Forex is a perfect business to get into. Right? In other words, you can make money uh, in both these markets successfully. Next, to succeed, you must be willing to work hard and master this skill. You know, I keep telling people that, is trading easy? Well, it's like asking the same question, is business easy? Is, um, are relationships easy? Is maintaining good health easy? Of course not, because if any of these things were easy, everyone would be a multi-millionaire, would own a billion-dollar company, and would be you know, having a six-pack set of apps. All right? It's not easy. All right? If it was easy, nobody in the world would work. Okay? Everyone would stay at home and make money by pressing a button on your computer screen. It's not easy. Right? And good is not easy. Because if it's easy, everyone will do it, and you know, there's no money left. Okay? In fact, it's not easy. Right? There's no free lunch in this world. No one gives you free money. So the business of forex trading is like any other business, like any other career in a way that you need skills, you need knowledge, 
all right? A lot of people, they go into trading without skills and knowledge, and that's akin to gambling, all right? So when they make money, it's based on luck, and they lose money, say, it's because of my bad luck, and that's not sustainable because, you know, anyone can make money in the markets, anyone, any idiot, and it's called luck. But can you keep that money? Can you do it consistently? Now, that is not about luck. That's about skill. So that's the main difference. So I need to understand that, yes, the skill of Forex trading is like any other skill that you learn in any other profession, whether you're a lawyer, a doctor, or an engineer. It takes a time to hone these skills. But the good thing is that in trading, it takes less time relative to other professions, like being a medical doctor and doing surgery. It takes less time relatively, but it still takes time nonetheless. And I can tell you that um, from my experience, even with the best coach and the best training, it'll probably take you at least six months to 12 months to truly master these skills if you work really hard. Okay, I, I know people who have taken you know, three to four years to master the skill, right? You know, maybe they didn't spend as much time every day or they kind of like, you know, were half-hearted. But if you're truly committed, I can tell you six months to one year, you can do this professionally uh, with what you're going to learn in this course. Because by taking this course, you've just cut short your learning curve tremendously by more than 90%. I can I don't know, always tell people that, could you um, do this yourself? Could you learn Forex yourself without, you know, attending a course? And the answer is, of course, you could do it yourself through trial and error. But I can tell you that it's not going to take you a year or four years. It'll probably take you over 10 years. You know, I have known people who have been trading for more than 10 to 12 years and not making any money consistently. They make the money, they lose it back again because they're going around in circles uh, making the same stupid mistakes. So the purpose of this course is to really uh, help you to cut your learning curve. So what you've invested in this course, I can tell you, you're, you've just bought... 10 years of your life compressed to a couple of hours if you learn this course in a condensed fashion, right? So you got to work hard, you got to practice, you're going to have a skill that's going to guarantee you an income for the rest of your life. I can tell you that. You know, I tell people nowadays that, you know, we go to school, we learn skills like engineering and accountancy and programming and these skills are great, but they can't guarantee us a job in 5 to 10 years. Because we can be replaced by someone else with the same skills. Someone eventually younger, cheaper, and faster. And when you work in a company, you know, uh, the more senior you are, the more you get promoted, the more expensive you are to be kept. And eventually, you can get retrenched, right? Or get a pay cut. But when you master the skill of trading, whether it's a forex trading or stock trading, it's a skill that can guarantee you an income for the rest of your life. All you need is a laptop, an internet connection, the skills, that's it, right? You're set for life. So I hope you're excited to master the skill. All right, so the next benefit of trading Forex is that it's a 24-hour market, so it's extremely flexible. You can trade anytime during the day, right? And so you can build your business from anywhere in the world at whatever time zone. And in fact, you can plan, plan your daily routine around your day job. So you can keep your day job and trade Forex outside your working hours. No worries. So this gives you uh, an overview of when the different Forex markets are active. And remember, Forex is run electronically um, via banks, right? So there's no central exchange, if you will, right? So different banks around the world kind of get active at different parts of the day. So um, uh, what you're looking at here is actually my time, which is Singapore local time, okay? So if you're looking at New York time, which is Eastern Standard Time, uh, with daylight savings, it's kind of like the reverse. So, in other words, um, Singapore 1 a.m. would be p.m. for Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time, that would be New York time. Okay? And, again, 1 p.m., Singapore time would be a.m., Eastern Standard Time. So just flip it around if you are in the Eastern Standard Time zone. Okay? All right. So what happens is, I'm going to talk in terms of Singapore time, so just flip it around. Uh, at 6 a.m. Singapore time, um, the Australians start trading. All right? Australian market opens, Sydney opens, so they start trading from 6 a.m. to um, 2 p.m. 
So that's when the Aussie dollar, Australian dollar, starts getting active because when, that's when the Aussies are trading. Okay, and at 8 a.m. you find that Tokyo, the Tokyo market opens and Tokyo banks start trading. So that's when the Japanese yen starts getting active, all the way from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, now so that's again when the Japanese yen gets active. Um, at 4 p.m. Singapore time, which is again 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the uh, London market opens. So the euro, the pound, right? These start getting active in trading all the way to um, 12 midnight Singapore time, which is 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the US, the uh, New York to be exact, starts at again obviously 9 a.m. Uh, New York time, which is 9 p.m. Singapore time, all the way to 5 a.m. Singapore time, that's when uh, the US market starts getting active, right? And the US dollar starts getting really active. So most people who trade the very liquid currency pairs, like the Euro USD, okay, they will start uh, looking at the markets usually from uh, 4 p.m. Singapore time onwards. That's when it starts getting active. If you're trading the Japanese yen or the Australian dollar, you can start, of course, a lot earlier, all right? Next. The business of forex trading allows you to generate consistent profits once you master this skill, okay? So profit returns of 5% to 20% a month are very possible. In fact, that's pretty common among successful forex traders. Now, some of you may think, but, you know, currencies don't move 5 to 20% a month. So how do you make 5 to 20% a month? And the answer is through leverage. The currency market allows you to leverage. And what it means is that you can buy, you know, a million dollars uh, or million US dollars uh, worth of currency without having a million US dollars, right? In fact, you just need uh, less than 1% of cash in order to take a million dollar um, position. So even if the price of the US dollar moves by just a bit, like moves by 0.001%, that equates to even a 10% return on your uh, investment because of the leverage factor, okay? So for a hundred thousand dollar account, for example, you can easily generate five to twenty grand a month in profits. Again, when I say easily, means you have mastered the skill. Okay. Now you don't have to start with a hundred thousand. Obviously, like I said, you can start with a thousand dollars. You can start with two hundred dollars. But understand that you are then getting you know five to twenty percent returns off that thousand dollars or off that two hundred dollars. Okay. And I know some of you are thinking, hey, Adam, I've seen videos of a watch um, ads where people say, you know, I'm making 100% a month, you know, 500% a month in Forex. Why are you making only 5% or 20%, right? That's not exciting. Well, <laughs> sure, you know, are there people who make 100%, 200% a month in Forex? Yes, they are. They are, I man, I can tell you this. They don't do that every month, okay? And I can tell you most of the people who are making 100%, 200% a month are taking extremely high risk. And what they don't tell you is, is that a month later or the next month, they lose everything, okay? So if you want to make, you know, get a big bang, sure, go do that. Go risk a lot and you can make a lot, you know, in a short period of time. But more often than not, it is not sustainable. Like I said, making money in the financial markets is very easy. An idiot can do it. It's called luck. Just being there at the right place at the right time. Remember, the market can either go up or go down. So you've got a 50-50 chance of being right when you place a bet, okay? But it is being able to keep that money and to do it consistently like a regular income source, that's difficult. And if you want to do that, you cannot risk a large amount of your capital because all you need is one time you're wrong and you will be wrong because it's a 50-50 chance, chance in the short term, uh, you're going to wipe everything out. And that's why most people who don't understand this, most people who go into trading, um, with this grandiose thing that I'm going to become a millionaire overnight, 99.9%, they will lose everything, all right? Uh, so I can tell you that most people who do not take a proper course and they go in there and they try this out, they will tend to blow their account. Blow their account means they're going to lose everything at least three to four times before they wake up and say, okay, fine, now I'm going to do it properly. And doing it properly means not wanting to get 100%, 200% return a month because that's not sustainable. Okay, it's getting 5%, 20% a month. That's sustainable, all right? And that, it's better to do that 
consistently month after month after month, then 100%, 200% one month and blow everything the next month. Make sense? I hope you agree. Right, and that's really important. Okay, good. Let's move on. Forex basics. Okay, if you know nothing about Forex, understand that Forex is quoted always in currency pairs. Okay, so it's unlike the stock market. In the stock market, you ask, what's the price of Facebook? Facebook's $160. That's it. That's one stock. But in currency, you can't ask, uh, what is the price of the US dollar? No, the price of the US dollar versus what? <laughs> versus the euro, versus the yen. So currency is always quoted in pairs, right? One currency being exchanged for another currency, okay? And each currency is given a three-letter code. So this is something that you have to memorize, okay? Uh, EUR is the euro, USD is the US dollar, GBP is the Greek British pound, JPY, Japanese yen, CHF is the Swiss franc, AUD, the Australian dollar, CAD, Canadian dollar, and NZD, the New Zealand dollar. So these are the uh, eight most common currency symbols that we will be trading. We won't be trading Zimbabwe dollars or Singapore dollars. No, that's too exotic, all right? Main currency pairs. So again, these are other currency symbols uh, that we won't be trading, all right? At least I don't trade them. And again, the most successful traders only trade the most common and liquid seven pairs. Now, I do trade beyond the seven pairs, slightly beyond it. I'm going to show it to you, but these are the seven most common pairs, which are the most liquid, yeah, the most actively traded, okay, highest volume. So it moves uh, with the greatest um, volatility and the tightest spreads. And I'll, I'll talk about spreads in a while. So what are the seven most common pairs? You've got the Euro USD or you've got the Euro Dollar. We've got the Pound Dollar. Um, we've got the dollar yen, which is US dollar versus Japanese yen, dollar franc, we have the Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, and the dollar cat. Okay, so these are the seven most common pairs. So how do you read a currency quote? Again, currencies are quoted in pairs and mostly in four decimal places. So what you see here is euro, USD, 1.35052. Okay. Now, we only pay attention to the four decimal places. Okay, The fifth decimal place is known as a fractional pip, and we do not care about that. Okay, So uh, it's too small to uh, worry about. We're looking at the four decimal places, right? So the last decimal place represents a pip, and I'll talk about that in a short while, okay? So when you see a currency pair, the first one is known as the base currency. So euro is the base currency. USD is known as the quote currency, all right? And like I said, the fourth decimal place is known as the pip, and the pip is the smallest change in the currency pair that we are concerned about. Okay, so in this case, it is 3505. Now, usually when we read it, we don't go 1.3505, we just say 3505, okay? Now, if it goes from 3505 to 3506, what does it mean? It means that the euro has, or rather the euro USD has gone up by one pip, right? Because from five to six, it's one pip. Does it make sense? Okay. Now, if it goes uh, 3505 to 3516, what has happened? The Euro USD has gone up by 11 pips. Does this make sense? 11 pips. Because 11 plus 5 is 16. Okay? So pip is the last decimal place. So if you look at this entire thing, it's 3505 pips since it moved up from zero. Okay? which was a damn long time ago. Like I mentioned, it's a fractional pip, so we're not going to worry about that. We're going to look at the pip. Okay. So like I said, the base currency always has a value of 1. Okay. So in this case, euro, we're saying 1 euro. So in this case, what we're saying is that 1 euro is equivalent to 1.3505 US dollars at this particular point in time. 
So in other words, if you want to buy one euro, you have to pay one dollar thirty-five or five cents US dollars to buy one euro. And if you want to sell one euro, you would receive one point three five or five US dollars. So that's how you read currency code. Okay. Now, understand that all currency pairs, except the ones with Japanese yen in them, are always quoted to four decimal places. Okay. So one pip is zero point zero 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 one. Okay. So that's one pip, which I mentioned earlier on. But any time you have got a Japanese yen in the pair, like you've got dollar yen, you've got pound yen, right? Anything with a yen, okay? The pairs are always quoted to two decimal places. So whenever you have a yen, one pip is the second decimal place. Second decimal place for any of the yen pairs. So most good, uh, the best example is the US yen or the dollar yen. So in this case, the dollar yen is 98.73 or 98.73. So again, um, what is this called? Right, the first uh, currency in the code is the base currency. Right, remember this is the base currency. Let me write now. This is the base currency. And what is this called, ladies and gentlemen? It's called the court currency. That's right. So remember that the base currency, which is the first one, is always one. Okay, it's always one. So what we're saying now is that one US dollar is equivalent to 98.73 Japanese yen. Okay, and again, this tree, the second decimal place is a pip. So if it goes from 9873 to 9874, right, the dollar yen has gone up by one pip. Make sense? Right? If it goes from 9873 to 9884, it's gone up by 11 pips. Okay? If it goes from 9873 to 9872, it's gone down by one pip. Right? So you got that? Okay? So in other words, again, right? One US dollar is equivalent to 98.73 Japanese yen. So again, what's a pip? A pip is known as a price interest point. It's the smallest change in value for, a, for any given forex code that we're interested in. Of course, the smallest one is the fractional pip, but we don't care about that. So it's the smallest one we care about. Okay, so once again, for all non-yen forex pairs, one pip represents the fourth decimal place of the code. Okay, so again, when the Euro USD moves from 3505 to 3506, it's a movement of one pip or 0 0.0001. Okay, for yen forex pairs, one pip represents the second decimal place of the court. When the dollar yen moves from 8055 to 8087, it's a movement of 32 pips. Right, just reiterating what I just said. Right, so I hope you understand, you're clear at this point of time. Alright, so the next thing to understand is uh, contract lot sizes. So in the forex markets, when you buy uh, or you sell, you're buying units of currency, right, in lots. So one standard lot that you buy is always 100,000 of the base currency. So if you buy one lot of Euro USD, you're actually buying 100,000 euros. If you buy one lot of dollar franc, you're buying 100,000 US dollars, okay? So it goes by lots. And again, one pip is the fourth decimal place. For non-yen pairs and for yen pairs, like dollar yen, pound yen, is the second decimal place. So just remember, one standard lot is a hundred thousand of the base currency. Now you don't have to buy one lot; you can buy less than one lot. Okay. So, like I said, a standard lot is a hundred thousand of the base currency, uh, and you don't have to buy one lot. You can buy um, a mini lot, ten thousand, micro lot, a thousand. A nano lot, a hundred. Okay. Now you don't have to remember the names of these. It's not important. What's important is to know how many units you have to buy and how you key in the lot size. Now it depends on the broker you use. For example, uh, if you use most um, MT4 platforms, you key in in terms of lot size. For example, 
uh, if you want to buy a hundred thousand euros, okay, for Euro USD, uh, then you key in one, all right? Because one means one lot means a hundred thousand, okay? If you want to buy uh, fifty thousand, what do you key in? You key in zero point five, okay? Zero point five um, because one lot is a hundred thousand, so zero point five is fifty thousand. Okay, let me just write it down for you. So one lot is a hundred thousand. One, two, three, and five point five is fifty thousand. One, two, three. Okay. So let me repeat. If you're trading with most brokers that use an MP4 platform, then you key in a uh, one for hundred thousand, zero point five for fifty thousand. If you're gonna buy five hundred thousand, then you key in five. Does it make sense? Okay. But there are certain brokers, for example, if you trade with interactive brokers, uh, that when you key in, you don't key in by lot size, you key in by the currency unit. So in other words, for interactive brokers, you key in 100,000, right? You key in 100,000, not one. Because if you key in one, you just buy <laughs> one US dollar, okay? So you have to key in 100,000. So you have to know the broker you're using, um, uh, do you key in lot size on the left or do you key in the number of units, right? That's really important. But... Like I said, for most MT4 brokers that you'll be using, you key in by lot size, all right? Next, how do you calculate Forex profits? So the profit you make or the loss you make is equal to the number of pips that you capture, okay? It moved by 20 pips. It moved by 100 pips. So how many pips did you capture? Multiplied by the number of lots, multiplied by the dollar value per pip per standard lot, okay? So you understand the number of pips, right? 20 pips, 100 pips, right? You understand the number of lots, right? So one lot, 100,000, two lots, 200,000, okay? You understand that. Now, what is the meaning of the dollar value per pip? In other words, how much is one pip worth per standard lot, okay? And the answer is this. The dollar value per pip for each standard lot is usually about $10, Okay, uh, for most of the actively traded pairs like Euro USD, Pound USD, and Aussie USD. Okay, but to get the exact uh, value, you can go to this website over here, which is mtpredictor.com/pipvaluetable to find out the exact dollar value per pip per lot for most of the major currency pairs. So if you go to the website, you will see something like that. Okay, and again, this changes. Uh, all the time. So you have to get the latest update uh, on that day. Okay, so on this day, when I log in, it's the 7th of October. So as of the 7th of October, you can see that for Euro USD, the value of one pip is, now, uh, this table is based on uh, a mini lot of 10,000. Okay, so we want to look at a standard lot, which is 100,000. Right, which I talked about. So, in other words, you have to take this, multiply it by 10 to get a standard lot. Okay, so 1 times 10 is $10. Right, so all this would be $10. Okay, this would be $8.90. Right, and uh, this would be uh, one, uh, this would be $10.20. Right, just multiply by ten. You know what I'm saying? Euro franc. This would be uh, ten dollars and twenty cents. Uh, this will be eight dollars and ninety cents. So you can see that for most of the currency pairs, it is a uh, straight up ten dollars. All right. So in other words, every one pip movement is ten bucks per lot that you buy. That's what it means. All right. So let's take a look at an example. So over here, you can see that this pair on the chart is a Euro USD, okay? And say we believe that the Euro USD is going up, okay? So when we say the Euro USD is going up, it means that the Euro is appreciating against the dollar. Or we say the dollar is depreciating against the Euro. So when we buy Euro USD, we are bullish on the euro. We think the euro is going up and we think the dollar, the US dollar is going down. So we go long on the euro, US dollar. Make sense? 
okay? And say we go long um, at 3510, okay? And we buy one lot. We buy 100,000 of the base currency, which is 100,000 euros. So we key in one lot into the broker, and we're in the trade. And say we are right, and it goes to 3550, and we sell. So how many pips did we capture? We captured 40 pips, right? Because uh, 3550 minus 3510 is 40 pips. And we bought one standard lot, so times one. If you bought two lots, times two. If you bought half a lot, times 0 0.5. Make sense? And we multiplied by the dollar value per pip. And the dollar value per pip for Euro USD, which you saw on the table, is $10, right? So 40 pips times $10 times one lot, is four hundred dollars, right? So in this case, you made four hundred dollars. Okay, again, that is the dollar value per pit per standard lot. Okay, so let me explain the same thing in a linear form. Some people like to think linear. Right? So again, I go long on Euro USD one standard lot at three five one zero. Okay, so. Again, I buy Euro USD at 3510 and I sell Euro USD at 3550. So the difference is 40 pips. Okay? And again, the profits is the number of pips times the dollar value per pip times number of lots. So we've got 40 pips times 10 bucks times one lot, that's $400. Okay? So another way of looking at it is that I'm buying. 100,000 euros and paying $135,100. Okay? I'm buying 100,000 euros and paying 135,100 for those 100,000 euros. And then I sell 100,000 euros over here and receive $135,500. Right? As you can see over here. So the profit earned is this and this. So this uh, plus this minus this is $400. Okay? So notice that if you don't use leverage, right, you would have to invest $135,100 or 100,000 euros to earn $400 US, right? So in other words, you're earning 400 US dollars from $135,100. That's a 0.29% return. You say that's such a small return. You're not gonna buy 135,000 US dollars to make four bucks. Are you nuts? Okay. That is why in Forex, all Forex traders use leverage. Because if you don't use leverage, it doesn't make sense. Because currencies move very little every day. So for us, we're gonna be day traders. We're gonna buy and sell on the same day. Alright, so to make it worth our while to have a good return. Right, we need to use leverage. In other words, we don't want to put down a hundred thousand euros in order to make a lousy four bucks. We want to put in a small deposit in order to buy the, the hundred thousand euros so that the profit over our deposit is a good return. Okay, so most forex brokers allow you to leverage one is to a hundred. What does that mean? That means for every hundred thousand euros, you only need one thousand euros. Of deposit to buy that position okay so if you only use a um, thousand euros okay that means you're making four hundred dollars from a thousand euros and that's a much better return okay but I can tell you that for us or for me at, at least when I trade Forex I don't ever use more than 1 is to 20 leverage Okay, so again, brokers allow you to leverage 1 is to 100, but for the purpose of trading, we will not be leveraging any more than 1 is to 20. Okay, so in other words, for every 10,000 you put into your account as capital, you don't have to buy more than 200,000 worth of any currency. Very rarely, right? Usually, I only leverage about 10 to 15 times. So for every 10,000 I put in, I'm only buying... Uh, 100,000 worth or 150,000 worth of currency. Okay, so again, if you employ a leverage of 1 to 20, we just need to invest a margin. Margin means deposit 
of 6755, right, or rather 5% of the position size. So our return in this case becomes $400 profit over 6755, which is the deposit you need to buy 135,000 euro uh, uh, dollars, and that's a 5.9% return per trade, which is a lot better, right? So let's look at the opposite scenario, which is going short. So in this case, we believe the Euro USD is uh, going down, all right? The Euro is depreciating against the dollar, okay? So we want to go short, and we short um, Euro USD at 3560. We short one standard contract, one lot, which is 100,000 euros, all right? And say we are right, it goes down, and we then buy it back, at 3520. Okay? So, how many pips do we earn? Okay, so notice in the Forex markets, okay, there are two ways to make money. One way to make money is buy low, sell high, right? Which is what we did in the previous example. The other way to make money is to sell high and buy low, right? So, it's the same thing, just go in the opposite direction, you make the same profits, okay? So, in this case, we sell at 3560. We buy at 3520 and we made 40 pips. Okay, we made 40 pips. The difference between uh, 3560 minus 3520. 40 pips, we made 40 pips, and each pip is $10. We bought one lot, that's 400 bucks. So, same thing. So, again, let me re explain in linear form. Going short Euro USD one standard contract, and so we sold Euro USD at three five six zero, and we bought it back at three five two zero. Difference forty pips. Okay, so again, what's your total profits? Number of pips, which is forty, multiplied by the dollar value per pip, which is ten bucks for this pair, multiplied by one lot, which we bought one lot. Okay, if you bought two lots, we times two. Okay. So we need 400 US dollars. So again, another way of looking at it is that we started by selling 100,000 euros. Okay, and received $135,600. Okay. And then we bought 100,000 euros and paid $135,200. So we bought 100,000 euros and paid this amount of which we had this amount already, okay? So the total profit earned will be the difference between this and this 400 bucks. All right, so we made $400. So again, without leverage, notice that you would have to utilize $135,000 to earn $400 and the return 400 over 135 grand, it's 0.29% return. All right, so hardly worth our while, okay? So we use leverage. So instead of putting down 135 grand, if we use leverage of one is to 20, that means we only have to put a 5% deposit or 5% margin in order to take this position. Okay, right, so 5% of 135 grand is $6,000. So if $6,000, we can buy this position, or rather sell it and buy it back, and we're making $400. So $400 over, oops, it's too fast. $400 over, let's go back to that. Right, $400 over six grand, it's 5.9% return for one trade that takes one to two hours. Pretty good return, right? So leverage is what makes, uh, what allows us to get a really good return on our uh, trades. Okay, so again, let me just talk a bit more about leverage. Again, in Forex, most brokers will allow traders to leverage one is to a hundred times, okay? So that means you can buy or sell a hundred thousand US dollars worth of currency with just a thousand dollars in your account. 
But in most trading situations, we usually only leverage 1 is to 20. Okay? So this means that with a $10,000 account, we usually will buy or sell up to 200000 worth of the currency at the very most. And that is all that's required to achieve exceptionally high returns consistently. Okay? So notice that based on the leverage, it tells you the margin required. Okay? So again, 1 is to 20 means that we just put a 5% deposit or 5% of the contract size to uh, go long or short on the position. Right? So that's how we use leverage. All right, so let's talk about the different kind of Forex traders. So just like there are so many ways to cook fish, there are so many ways to trade Forex. And there's no the way, there's no the right way. There are many ways. And you can be really successful and really profitable in many different ways. So it all depends on choosing a style of trading that you're comfortable with, that suits your personality, and that fits in with, again, uh, your work schedule or your time schedule. All right? So there are basically four kinds of Forex traders. And let me begin with the long term, and then I'm going to go down to the short term, right? So some people are what we call position traders. In other words, uh, they will enter the Forex position and they will hold it for a couple of months or even years, right? They have a long-term view. And normally these people, they will tend to trade based on looking at fundamentals, right? The underlying health of the economy, uh, what's happening to interest rates and GDP, and they look at the overall big trend. So normally position traders like George Soros, for example, uh, when he enters a trade, he will target 500 to 1,000 pips per trade or more, right? So to capture 500,000 pips, you have to stay in the trade for you know, a few weeks to months to even years, right? And position traders, they tend to look at the charts and they look at daily candles, right? So each candle represents one day or they look at weekly candles. So those are position traders, okay? Um, next, we have swing traders. So swing traders will typically target 50 pips to about 150 pips per trade. So when they get in, they hit 50, 150, they're out of the trade. And the trade duration usually lasts for less than a week, a couple of days, right? And they'll look at charts with hourly or four hourly candles. So those are swing traders. Next, you've got day traders. And day traders, as the name implies, uh, they buy and sell within the day, right? The trade rarely uh, passes over the next day, right? By the end of the day, they, they close the trade. And so normally, a day traders would do a couple of trades a day, right? Maybe uh, two, three trades a day. Where swing traders, right, it takes about a couple of days to close the trade, right? So they may not take as many trades. And position traders will take even less trades because their one trade lasts for a few months or even weeks or years, okay? Uh, day traders uh, would look at charts and analyze based on 15-minute candles or one-hour candles or four-hour candles. Now, the shortest time frame that people trade are, well, we call them scalpers, right? They scalp the market. So scalpers, usually they enter and exit within a few seconds. So they buy, boom, they sell, all right? And they just target five to 10 pips, they're out of the trade. And they look at one minute and five minute candles, all right? So again, you've got successful traders in all four categories. My personal preference that has worked for me where I make the most money consistently is, that's right, I'm a day trader, right? So I usually take anywhere from one to a maximum of three trades a day, no more than that, right? Because if I take, if I take an average of two trades a day, which I do, in a month, you're doing about 40 trades, and that's more than enough, 40 trades a month. It's more than enough, okay? And again, my usual target is, like it implies, 20 to 40 pips per trade, and I tend to trade on 15-minute candles. So each candle is a 15-minute time frame. So that is my personal style. So let me show you the charts and show you how um, this kind of looks like on the charts itself. All right, so let me show you an example of the different kind of trading styles with uh, the charts, okay? So what I'm using is the MT4 platform, which is the trading platform that most traders use. And uh, most Forex brokers use the same MT4 platform. And in the lesson on technical analysis, you're going to be learning exactly how you set up the platform, 
how do you use all the uh, charting software. But for now, I'm just going to show you some basics of how we trade in the different styles, right? So I'm looking at the Euro USD, okay? And um, the market's closed right now. I'm doing this on a weekend, so you can see that uh, the, the prices are not moving. But when the market's open, you can see the prices be moving rapidly, okay? Um, now, what I've selected is D1, which means daily candles, right? Which means each candle represents one day. So that's one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, so on and so forth. And you can see these red and green candles. Uh, the green candles represent bullish candles, which means the price closed higher than the open. And bearish candles where the price closed lower than the open. And again, you'll be learning candlestick patterns in detail under the lesson of technical analysis. So right now, I just want to show you that um, for position traders, okay, who are long-term traders, uh, they look at daily candles, right? And so what happens is, for example, they may see an uptrend and say, okay, I want to um, enter the trend. So for example, you can see this is a very clear uptrend over here. All right, and let me say, okay, I want to buy here, right? Buy the Euro USD, and maybe I want to sell it somewhere here, for example. Okay, so so how long is this, right? So this April, right? April, May, June, July, August, right? April, May, June, July. So it's five months, right? So the whole one trade for five months before the exit is a position trader. Uh, to me, it's really long term. And how many pips is that? Well, let's take a look. Um, if you click on this um, crosshair, okay, um, and you click on this and you drag. Now, do you notice you can see these numbers? Uh, can you see this 4376? Can you see that? If you drag 4638, 513, can you see that? Okay, so those are the number of pips. Number of pips. Um, so, in other words, if you were to uh, buy from here, okay, from here, and you were to sell it here, how many pips is that? That is 6131. Can you see that? Now, 6131, you can see it's four decimal places, okay? But in this case, the one is a fractional pip. So you ignore the one. You take 613. So this means it's 613 pips. 613 pips, okay? So which means that if you were to buy uh, here all the way and you sell it there, how many pips is that? That is 1,357 pips, right? Because the tree at the end, 13573, ignore the tree because that is a fractional pip. So again, 1357, that's 1,357 pips. So you can see that for a long-term uh, position trader, Right, they are you know they are in it to capture a thousand pips, five hundred pips, two thousand pips. Okay, so um, to do that, you have to be in a trade for a couple of months. Okay, so that's position trading. Um, so that's not my style. Right, you can do that if you want to. That's not my style. Uh, next would be uh, I mentioned swing trading. Right, so swing trading is again you tend to look at uh, hourly candles as a swing trader. So. When you click H1, it's hourly candle. So now, it's kind of like we're taking a microscope, we're zooming in such that now each candle that you see is one hour. So it's a one hour candle, one hour. So each candle takes one hour to form, okay? So as a swing trader, okay, uh, you can look at the hourly candles, one hour or four hour candles, four hour candles, right? Where each candle represents four hours. So for a swing trader, they may take um, a slightly uh, longer trade, okay? For, for a swing trader, they may, for example, uh, trade from here. Where I can see uh, an uptrend. You can see this uptrend here, right? And then this consolidation going sideways. So they may take a trade, for example, they may buy somewhere here. Okay, and um, yeah, they may maybe sell 
Let me take a look. 3, 5. Yeah, in fact, shorter than that. So for swing trader, let me zoom in a bit. Okay, so they may buy somewhere but there, and they may even sell just there. Okay, so they captured about 100. Okay, you can see 1315, 1315 at the center. So that's 131 pips. All right, so they captured 131 pips, they're out of the trade. And again, from here to there, they buy and sell there. It took a couple of days from the 5th of July to uh, about the 11th of July, right? So that's about five days, six days, right? So that's a swing trader, right? So the trade lasts for a few days, okay? They look at four hour, one hour candles, okay? Um, next, so let's go down. We have got position trading, we've got swing trading, and next we day trading, right? Which is what I do. So I'm a day trader, and as a day trader, I tend to use 15 minute candles, right? 15 minute candles. So now it's like I take a microscope, I zoom in even further down, and each of these candles you see over here, okay, these are. 15 minute candles. So each candle represents 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, right? So as a swing, as a day trader, I will usually go for you know 20 or 30 pips and I'm out. Alright. So you know I could, for example, again you notice that you know there's a nice trend here going up, trend going down, right? So reverses up, and I could take a trade here somewhere, for example. I'll teach you again. On the lesson on the strategy, right, the impulse pullback, impulse pin bar, I'll tell you exactly when to get in based on the moving averages, support resistance, candlestick pattern. So I'm not showing you the exact strategy right now. I don't want to confuse you. I'm just showing you, you know, how many pips we capture, right? So I could enter here, for example, as a day trader. And, um, you know, I capture something like about there. Right? I can see 242 at the center. So that's 24 pips, right? So, you know, I buy somewhere here, all right? I buy, again, I buy somewhere here, oops, buy somewhere here, and there I'll sell somewhere here, all right? So I buy here, I sell there, I get 24 pips. That's it, I'm out, and I go for the next trade, I may buy here and sell there, all right? So I'm capturing the very short-term trends within the day. So you can see that uh, this trade from here to here was within the same day, within the 3rd of October. So how long did this trade take? It took um, one, two, three, four, right? One candle is 15 minutes, right? So four candles is one hour. So one, two, three, four, that's one hour. One, two, three, four, two hours. One, two, three, half an hour, right? So this trade lasts for um, you know, about two and a half hours. That's it, and I'm out of the trade. So this is day trading, right? And finally, you've got scalping. And scalping, I don't do because it's too fast-paced for me, right? It's too stressful. Right? I don't like to be a scalper. But scalpers, they may use one-minute candles or five-minute candles, right? So they may use a one-minute candle, and it's kind of like you zoom in even further, the microscope, all right? And you can see that each of these, these candles are one minute, right? They take one minute to form, and the scalper may buy here, right? They may say, hey, okay, there's this uh, sideways, there's a trend going up, right? So they buy here. They buy here and, you know, they, they get maybe like 10 pips. I can see 103, right, in the center, so that's 10 pips. So they buy here, they get 10 pips, boom, they're out, they sell, right? And they get in again, they sell again, they get in again, they sell. Really stressful, you can do a lot of trades a day, not my style, right? So again, I'm a day trader and hope this gives you a better understanding of the different kind of traders, okay? So let's move on to the next part. All right, so let's run through the entire trading course curriculum. And you should be able to finish this course within a week. You know, you can look at one lesson a day and then practice it. It'll be ideal, it'll be optimal, right? And do practice it as you learn. So lesson one, we have just coming to the end of lesson one, where it's the introduction to Forex trading. I do hope now you've got a pretty good understanding of what Forex is all about and how we trade it, okay? Lesson two will be going to next, where you're going to learn the secret to achieving consistent trading profits, and it's based on statistics, based on mathematics, right? 
you'll be learning the statistics of, again, consistent profits, um, how to achieve consistent profits from random outcomes. All right? In a short run, price movement is pretty random, but there are repeatable patterns that we exploit in the markets to create uh, consistent profits over a number of trades. You'll be learning exactly how to trade just like a casino. You know, the casino is playing a game of chance with the players, but the casino always wins at the end of the day because they've got an edge over the players mathematically. You will learn the principle of how casinos do it and implement it into your trading routine. And how do you develop a trading system with a positive expectancy in the markets? Next, in lesson three, we're going to technical analysis, which is the main tool I use to get an edge in the markets, to anticipate price movements. You'll be learning about the foundational principles of TA. Uh, we'll cover candlestick patterns. How do you identify trends? How to utilize support and resistance levels. How to master moving averages. And how to use the trading platform. And we're going to be using the MT4 platform, which is the most common platform used by traders. Okay, lesson four. Lesson four is all about position sizing, risk management. How do you uh, manage your money and size your positions? How many units do you buy? How many contracts do you trade? And how do you automate your trading business with order management techniques? So your entries and exits are automated. You don't have to be there. It takes your emotions out of the equation. Okay? Lesson five and lesson uh, lesson five will be the first lesson where you'll be learning the actual strategy where we put everything together into a system. Okay, a system that will generate consistent profits. And the first um, strategy you will learn is the impulse pullback strategy. Okay, so you'll be learning about specific price action patterns we'll be using for this strategy, entry and exit rules for long setups and short setups. How do we filter to take only the highest quality trades? And how do you manage your trade? Right? How do you uh, exit the trade? How do you enter the trade with precision? Okay. Lesson six, really important psychology of winning traders. So how do, you, how do winning traders think differently from the herd? How do you manage and overcome negative emotions that will impede your progress as a trader, that can sabotage you? Okay. How do you manage temporary drawdowns in your capital, which is inevitable in trading? And how do you program your mind to become a winning trader? Okay, so in lesson seven, you'll be learning the next strategy, which is the impulse pin bar strategy. This is another very powerful strategy that I use with really high win rates and expected profits. Okay, you'll be learning about the bullish and bearish pin bar and specific price action patterns that work with this strategy exact entry and exit rules for long and short setups, how do you filter for the highest quality trades, and again, trade management and exit strategies. Finally, to cap it all off, lesson eight, developing a trading plan. Just like any business needs a business plan, as a trader, as a professional trader, you need a trading plan to guide you. So you'll be learning how to develop such a trading plan, and you'll be learning about my daily trading routine that takes three to six hours a day, or even less, okay? How do you keep a trading journal to record your progress and to keep improving with each and every day? And we'll also talk about how do you choose a Forex broker with really tight spreads, low commissions that can really help you in your trading journey. Okay, so that concludes uh, lesson one, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson to uh, revise what you've learned. If you've got questions, send me an email. I'll be happy to help. This is Adam Koo signing off, and I'll see you in the next lesson.